So far, we have only discussed in this course electricity. Calm down. But this course is about electricity and magnetism. Today, I'm going to talk about magnetism. In the fifth century BC, the Greeks already knew that there are some rocks that attract bits of iron. And they are very plentiful in the district of Magnesia, and so that's where the name magnet and magnetism comes from. The rocks contain iron oxide, which we will call a magnetite. In 1100 A.D., the Chinese used these needles of magnetite to make compasses, and in the 13th century, it was discovered that magnetites have two places of maximum attraction, which we call poles. So if you take one piece of magnetite, it always has two poles. Let's call one pole A and the other B. A and A repel each other, B and B repel each other, but A and B attract each other. There is a huge difference between electricity and magnetism. With electricity, you also have two polarities but you are free to choose a plus or a minus pole. With magnetism, you don't have that choice. The poles always come in pairs. Isolated magnetic poles do not exist, or as a physicist would say, magnetic monopoles do not exist as far as we know. If anyone finds a magnetic monopole and don't think that people are not looking, that would certainly be worth a Nobel Prize. In principle, they could exist, but as far as we know, they don't exist, they have never been seen. Electric monopoles do exist. If you have a plus charge, that's an electric monopole. You have a minus charge, electric charge, that is an electric monopole. If you have a plus and a minus of equal strength, that is an electric dipole. Whenever you have a magnet, you always have a magnetic dipole. There is no such thing as a magnetic monopole. In the 16th century, Gilbert discovered that the Earth is really a giant magnet and he experimented with compasses and he was effectively the first per person to map out the, the magnetic field of the Earth. And if you take one of those magnetite needles and the needle is pointing in this direction, which is the direction of northern Canada, then by convention, we call this side of the needle north, and we call this side of the needle south. Since A repels A and B repels B, but A and B attract each other, in North Canada is the magnetic south pole of the Earth, not the magnetic north pole. That's a detail now, of course. So this is the way that we define the direction north and south of these magnetites needles. A crucial discovery was made in 1819 by the Danish physicist Ørsted. And he discovered that a magnetic needle responds to a current in a wire. And this linked magnetism with electricity. And this is arguably perhaps the most important experiment ever done. Ørsted concluded that the current in the wire produces a magnetic field and that the magnetic needle moves in response to that magnetic field which is produced by the wire. And this magnificent discovery caused an explosion of activity in the 19th century, notably by Ampere, by Faraday and by Henry, and it culminated into the brilliant work of the Scottish theoretician Maxwell. Maxwell composed a unified field theory which connects electricity with magnetism. And that is at the heart of this course. Maxwell's equations. You will see them all four, all four by the end of this course. If I have a current, a wire, let's say the wire is perpendicular to the blackboard and the current goes into the blackboard, I put a cross in there. If the current comes out of the blackboard, I put a dot there. 
And there is a historical reason for that. You've always talked about vectors in 1801 and in other courses, but you've never seen a vector. And I'm going to show you a vector. This is a vector. And this <laughs> is when it comes to you. That's when you see a dot. And this is when it goes away from you. That's when you see a cross. So this current, when it's going into the blackboard, I can put these magnetite needles in its vicinity, and they will then do this. And when I put it here, it will go like this. And they follow a circle, and this is the way that we define magnetic field and the direction of the magnetic field, namely that the magnetic field for which we always write the symbol B, magnetic field, is now in the clockwise direction. By convention, current goes into the blackboard. And if you ever forget that, use what we call the right-hand corkscrew rule. If you take a corkscrew and you turn it clockwise, the corkscrew goes in the board. That connects the B with the current. If you take a corkscrew and you rotate it counterclockwise, then the corkscrew would come to you, comes out of the cork. And that's how you find the magnetic field going around current wires. It's just a convention. I want to show you how a magnetic needle responds to a current. I have here a wire through which I'm going to run a fabulous amount of current, something like 300 amperes, and you're going to see that wire there. I'm going to get my lights right. Let me see how I want it to go. This is the way I want it to go. To get you optimum light there. When I draw a current, here you see the the magnetite, the, we call it a compass nowadays, and it's lined up in the direction of the magnetic fields of the Earth. We're going to run 300 amperes through here, and it will change the direction. It will change the direction, which is, there's going to be a magnetic field around the wire like this, so it will go like this. The current that I run is so high that things begin to smell and smoke within seconds. The battery is not going to like it when I draw such a high current. I can therefore do it only for a few seconds. So this compass will swing in this direction and it starts to oscillate. I can't keep the current so long that it stops the oscillation. So I will stop it by hand and convince you that that's really the equilibrium position. So if you're ready for that, so we get now connection. Watch it. Three, two, one, zero. There it goes. And I will stop it. The current is still going. You see, that's the, that is the equilibrium position. And I will stop the current. And now I will reverse the current in the opposite direction. And now you will see that it swings backwards. It's 180 degrees in a different direction. Three, two, one, zero. There it goes. I will stop it. A few seconds, that's the equilibrium position. And I let it go. So you've seen that, indeed, the magnetic needle responded to the magnetic field that was produced by the wire. This was the great discovery by Ørsted. The discovery, this demonstration all by itself, may not be very spectacular for you, but historically it is of enormous importance. I would argue perhaps the most important demonstration, the most important research ever done in physics, because it connects electricity with magnetism. It was the foundation of the creation of the whole concept of a field theory. Action equals minus reaction, and that means that if a wire that runs a current has a force on the magnet, then of course the magnet must also exert a force on the wire. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you too, but now I have a much more potent magnet, for which I will use this one and the magnet will not move, it's so heavy that it can't move, so now you will only see the wire move. 
And the basic idea is then as follows. Here is that magnet. This is the north pole of the magnet, and this is the south pole. I don't remember which is which, to be frank with you. So the magnetic field would run then like so. And I have here a current wire, a wire that runs a current through it. The wire is perpendicular to the blackboard. If, when I turn the current on, if the current is coming out of the blackboard, and I have 50 percent chance because I really don't remember whether this is north or south. But let's assume that this is the configuration, that the current is coming out of the blackboard. Then you will see this wire experience a force up. It is an experimental fact that the force on the wire is always in the direction of I cross B, these are unit vectors. And since I is coming out of the blackboard, if I cross I with B, I get a force in this direction. And so if I reverse now the current, if the current goes like this, then of course the wire wants to go down, and I will show you both. But I don't know which one will come first, because I didn't mark the poles. Ah. Oh. So you'll see it now slightly different from the way I have drawn it. I've drawn you the magnet looking this way, but it's of course much nicer for you to see it this way. So you see the wire, and there is the magnet. And now I'm going to run a few hundred amperes through that wire, and then it either will jump up or it will jump down, and then I will reverse the current, and then the opposite thing will happen. Okay, we ready for this? Three, two, one, zero. Notice there was a distinct force down. The force was so high that it even pulled down the supports. So now I can predict that if I reverse the current from this experiment, that now the wire will jump up. There we go. I know now exactly because I switched it this way, so now I will switch it this way and the wire will jump up. That's the first drawing you see. Three, two, one, zero. Very clear. You saw it come out. Okay. Let me take this down. All right. If I have a, a wire through which I run a current, let's say I run a current I1 through this wire, it will produce a magnetic field 